Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So in constructing a tree, you use a, 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 something like opposable thumbs is called a derived character. That's a, a word or statement you should understand. You should know what that means. So monkeys don't have shoulder rotation? A derived character. No, they don't. Monkeys can't do this. So we do. Apes can. Huh. We can, too. Is it derived? So we kind of share that with apes. So monkeys can't move their arms. Yeah, they can move their arms like this, what but they can't go around like this. We're more related to apes than we are to monkeys. Yes, we are. Why can't they rotate? Because we, we share more stuff in common with apes than we do with monkeys. Could a What's monkey that? And a yeah, I'm related to an ape. Well, nope, monkeys, monkeys and apes can't mix. They're different Freaks species. Me out. Derived characters. Can you say that what that is in a couple words? Yes, a derived character is is something new that comes about in evolution. Like an opposable thumb. Some of the old mammals that were around a long time ago, some of them evolved one of their digits to be kind of out on the side. Where it could touch the other digits. And that's an opposable thumb. So when the opposable thumb evolved, when it first came about, probably through some mutation or something, one, one of the digits on the paws of these ancient mammals just was a little more out to the side, a little maneuverable, and then it could touch other things, and that allowed this animal to grasp. And if you can grasp a branch, you can live in the trees easier. For instance, you can grasp things. And so all the primates share that derived character, opposable thumbs. And, and whatever, when, when that first arrived, when that, uh, that character first came on, uh, came into the organisms, everything that evolved from that organism, we call a primate. Everything that has opposable thumbs, we call a primate. And so you can see it's kind of like an evolutionary tree. We have a long time ago, we have just a so single mammal, we, and then some of them evolved opposable yeah. thumbs, and some did not, and others did not. So this is no opposable thumbs. And the opposable thumbs went on to become, evolve into, all of the different primates. I'm on, we're only showing two of them here, monkeys and apes. Of course, there's a bunch of different types of apes. There's a bunch of different types of monkeys. This might be the monkey branch. You know, and this might be the ape branch. Yes? Real quick, um, if you were from apes, um, how, how did the humans evolve? How were the different types of humans? Like, just did, did different monkeys or apes the, move to different areas? That, that's, that's what this is. This is the, the, the lecture I've been doing with the, uh, with the regular bio class, because it comes in their book before it comes in ours. And we're actually going to talk about that um, after the AP exam. Okay. I'm going to tell you all about human evolution, primate and human evolution. It takes three days. Okay, it's it's a, it's a long story, and I give you the short version of it. You can take an entire class on it in college. Yeah. Okay. Do you think if like a human was raised by apes that they'd be able to communicate with apes? Like, pardon? Like, I got, like, pardon. Like, yeah, that actually happen? Like, there there, there have, able to understand why there have been people. Raise apes, do it the other way. Yeah, it taught them sign how to communicate sign, sign language. Like Coco the gorilla. That's yeah, so cool. and, uh, and and those gorillas are very much able to communicate yeah. with humans. And, and one of the things the chimps sign the most is let me out of this cage. <laughs> what? Wait, what is it? Really? The chimps, once they taught them how to do sign language, they would sign let me out of this cage. Why, Why didn't they let them out of the cage? What's that? Did they live in the house like? Like if I, if, yeah, but sometimes they put them in cages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty strong. Hey, metaphorically. And just like a little kid, they get mad and, and they'll hit you, and, and a chimpanzee's strong enough to kill you. So sometimes you want to keep it in a cage. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, the this there's a whole science to making these evolutionary trees. And that science is called cladistics. Oh, cladograms, right? Yeah, cladograms. The science of what? The science of making evolutionary trees. It's a science. It used to be kind of an art. 
where you just looked at some organisms and you say, oh, those look pretty close. I'll put them in the same group. That was the traditional way of doing it. But we found that the traditional way of doing things, you know, some things look pretty similar, but they really aren't. Like a dolphin and a fish. Those look pretty similar. And so you might just, if you just look at them, you might say, oh, they're probably related because they look pretty close and you put them in the same group. They're actually not very close. And so they needed a better way of making these evolutionary trees than the traditional way that they used to do back in the time of Linnaeus in the 1700s. So this Linnaeus science was taxonomy. born, cladistics. What's that? I said Linnaeus taxonomy. That's right. You really want that question. I you? do. Can't give it to you. He's not Greek. And so this is just kind of showing uh, th this, uh, the whole table on page 355 is showing kind of how they made this evolutionary tree. The little baby breastfeeding here means mammal, because mammals feed on mammary glands. So when apes have babies, do they breastfeed? Yes, do all mammals do. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dolphins. Yeah. So dolphin, how do dolphins breastfeed? Dolphins? Yeah. Yep, yeah, they have little yeah. little nipples but that do smell. But do dolphins have nipples? Little nipples. Dolphins don't have nipples. Yeah. So They're weird. They're sucking on it. They're right up next to it. In the water? Yeah. Wow. Some talent. Yeah. But wait, wait. Dolphins don't have hair, do they? No. Yeah, they do. They it's do? just real fine and oh. slick. I asked too much. Yeah. Okay, so I was like, hmm, talent. <laughs> I mean, they went back into the water. And they all right. They came from a Don't a dolphins, land like, rape people mammal. all the time? Like, well, well, no, no, they, like, I know they, like, hop on the whales came from cows when they, like, try to get them up. Yeah, it looked kind of like, like, if you're, like, pregnant and you're, like, on your period, you're not supposed to, like, swim with dolphins. It was a carnivore, like a tiger or something like that. Like, more people are raped by dolphins than they are attacked by sharks. Holy crap. That's hilarious. More people are what? Raised by dolphins. Isn't that true? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I swear yes. I read that somewhere. <laughs> Wait, Mr. Wells, yeah. isn't it true that more people are raped by dolphins every year than attacked by sharks? Are raped? I swear <laughs> my life. I read something that said if you're like on your if you're like on your period or you're pregnant, do not swim with dolphins because they will try to rape you. Really? Dolphins are the only other mammals that have sex with dolphins. Really? See? I'm right. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's like pleasure, like not yeah. just like maybe. I've chosen not to swim with them. <laughs> <laughs> apes, um, have, apes don't have sex, like normal. <laughs> okay, I think the discussion has, has degenerated here. I'm trying to go back to the discussion. We're going to spend, listen, we're going to spend time talking about the animals and the different, and their different what they're like, but um, now we got to talk about cladistics first. Um, this is a chart made with a bunch of organisms, and you can you can do cladistics with any organisms you want to do it with. You can just pick out any organisms you see and try to make an evolutionary tree based on those organisms. So here they picked out just some organisms at random. Of course, there's 30 million different organisms on the Earth, so that tree would be rather large. Let's make it more manageable. A chimpanzee, a dog, a finch, which is a bird, crocodile, lizard, frog, tuna, which is a fish, and a lancelet, which is a, uh, it's, it's like a fish, um, but it doesn't have a, uh, a, a vertebrae, a, a bony backbone. It looks like a, it's kind of like a, a, a fish without a backbone. An eel actually has a backbone, so it's not an eel. But it's a, anyway, a lancelet. We'll learn about those a little bit later, too. And, and here, on, so that's, that's on, the, uh, on the top of our graph. And then on the side of the graph, we have put just some characteristics, some derived characters, characters that are shared by certain organisms. Like mammary glands, the chimpanzee and the dog both have mammary glands. They're mammals. So we put an X there for them. None of these other ones have mammary glands. The chimp and the dog both have hair, so we'll put that X there. None of these have it. 
The finch and the crocodile both have a gizzard. A gizzard is an organ that's used for grinding food. It's like a digestive organ. And we don't have it. We don't have one, but finches and crocodiles do. Isn't there an animal called a gizzard? Yeah, that was no, not an animal. No, not a lizard. <laughs> I think there is. Scales, finches, crocodiles, and lizards all have scales. An amniotic egg is an egg that uh, has a uh, has a membrane around it, uh, or it, or within the egg that that holds water. And we actually have one. We have uh, chim chimps have it. Humans have an amnion surrounding their baby in the womb. And, uh, and so do yeah. these other organisms, but not the frog or the tuna or the lancelet. Four limbs, a lot of them have that. Backbone, a lot of them have that. And a notochord and embryo, all of them have that. A notochord is like a spinal cord, kind of. Actually, a notochord is actually more like a, uh, the beginnings of a vertebral column. I'm sorry, it's not a spinal cord. Um, but uh, the beginnings of a vertebral column that in all of all of these organisms develops into a vertebrae, but in a lancelet it never develops into a bony structure. So the uh, the notochord, all of these things have it, and we'll we'll learn about notochord later. But what you do is you take the organisms, you take the the feature that are is shared by everyone here, or shared by the most organisms, and that is called the primitive feature. Primitive meaning it must have evolved a long time ago because everybody has it. Okay. So uh, uh, the primitive feature here goes first in our in our um, what we call we call this a cladogram, which is kind of an evolutionary tree. And so cladograms are usually kind of shaped like this. There's different ways you can draw them. Actually, our book draws them a little different, but often you see them like this. And we're going to work with these a little bit in this class. But at the very beginning, this first primitive trait is the notochord. That's the primitive trait shared by everybody that's going to come up in this, um, in this tree. And the lancelet... It has a notochord, but it does not have any of the other traits that we come to. See, the lancelet has the notochord, but nothing else. So it's probably the oldest organism, because it has so few of the other traits that these things have. The next thing that evolved, the next character, is a vertebrae, a backbone, because that's shared by the most organisms. So vertebrae probably came next, according to our chart. Notice, so here, if you follow, going upward on this scale is going forward in time here. So the notochord came first. That's what we call a primitive trait. And then the vertebrae came next. Now, we already branched out, and that's lancelets have everything behind here. So lancelets have a notochord, but not a vertebrae. So what's the next group that has the vertebrae but not anything else? Tuna. So the tuna's next. <coughs> you see, the tuna's pretty old. It has a notochord and a vertebrae, but nothing else. Do you see? Let's continue on. What do you think would go next here? What's the next, what we call derived trait? The next thing that came about in evolution? Four limbs. Four limbs, Four limbs is probably next. <laughs> Y'all are pretty good here. So what has four limbs but not necessarily the rest of the stuff? Frog. Frog. So we get a frog's probably next. See, the frog has four limbs, vertebrae, and notochord. You see? It's like that chicken thing. Isn't it? Yeah, it's, you've already seen these on the, on the computer program, which is good. That's why, why did you do that? I wanted to kind of get you used to looking at this. Because this is actually pretty tough if, if you're not sure what's going on here. There's nothing with four limbs in no vertebrae, right? That's a good point. We don't have anything with four limbs and no vertebrae. Well, can there be another example of that? So it doesn't have to necessarily be related to vertebrae or four limbs. It could be something else. Yes, there, there is. Now, you could. It is possible for an organism to lose the vertebrae. Well, when for instance, up the, up the line here, you might have 
way later you might have a whale come up. I guess that would be an example of not having uh, four limbs, you see. Mm -hmm. And so you would have four limbs come up, and then later you could have a branch that leads to whales, and whales actually don't have the four limbs. I thought whales... So, so, so on the branches, you would lose the four limbs for don't, the whales. Don't whales have four limbs? As, 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 as embryos, yeah, I guess they do. But not as adults, yeah. What about when you get up to, like, gizzard, hair, and... and well, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Real quick, um, wouldn't, yeah. that, wouldn't that throw off, like, the whole way of classifying how old different things are, different species? Are. It, it makes it more complicated. But see, you can have, as, a, as an evolutionary, as a, as a derived character, you can have okay. loss of limbs. It could be one of your derived characters. Okay. Yeah. And you can't always figure it out perfectly from these charts. Sometimes you're, it's still a little confusing. But this is a scientific way of going about it. What's next after four limbs, do you think? Amniotic. Amniotic egg. Amniotic egg? And what has that, but none of the other things? Uh, lizard. Lizard? Yeah, the lizard has the amniotic egg. And let me show you, let me stop here because now it's going to get a little bit tougher. Let me show you the way they, they're portraying it here instead of like that. You, you actually usually see it like this. They're portraying it a little bit different. Here's our common ancestor. That's much harder. And here's the lancelet is the first group. They, and, uh, and again, it has the nonacord. Why does it say out well, the outgroup, outgroup is a term that uh, means that it doesn't have any of these shared derived characters that some organisms share with another. Determines the it, ancestral and derived states. What's that? It says that it is used to determine the ancestral and derived states. Yeah, the, the land, are you talking about the outgroup? It says the out group is the taxon that is used to determine the ancestral and derived states right. of characters in the in group. What that means is the lancelet has the least amount of characters with compared to everyone else. So that's what they call it, the out group. Um, and everything else kind of, it's the oldest one, in other words. Um, everything else evolved from that. So you have vertebrae, just like we had. And you can see the tuna is one group. And then you have four limbs, and the frog has that. And then you develop the amniotic egg. Now, you can see here we get a little bit, there's a little, there's some more uh, branches here. Um, everything from this branch forward has the amniotic egg, right? However, there are a couple of branches here. There's one branch, if you look back, let's see epidermal scales. Epidermal scales are shared by finches, crocodiles, and lizards. So this branch that goes to lizard has other branches coming off of it. And so at some point here, evolved epidermal scales. So when like its own individual little, its own individual. It's got its own little branch. individual branch. So that's like if you had whales, then that's where you would put like, you know, it. Well, it goes at awesome. the end of that branch then. So let's take a look. So what is, so epidermal scales, lizards have them, what else has them? Crocodiles and... Crocodiles have epidermal scales? And finches have epidermal scales, finches right? Finches have epidermal scales. Yes, they do. Birds have scales, and the scales have evolved into feathers. Uh -huh. Oh, you look at their legs. Uh, yeah, you can look at their scaly legs. Mm -hmm. So, what else does the finch and crocodile have, according to our chart? Gizzards. It has a gizzard. I swear, can you eat a gizzard? Yeah. 
Yeah, you can eat gizzard. If you buy, if you buy a whole chicken, there's usually like a bag of organs inside, like the heart and stuff like that. You can, you can. So eat check them. this out. We can make a branch. With that has gizzard on one branch. You see, this branch has gizzard. Oh, do we need to like? And we would have finch. And what's the other one? Crocodile. Crocodile on this branch, you see, that evolved a gizzard. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. We came up with it. Oh, yeah. Chance. And then for the lineage. So the gizzard the evolved and led to crocodile and finch, and scales evolved, and all, th all three of these have scales. So as you go backwards through these trees, you run through the the uh, features that they have. So for the for the dogs and chimpanzees, you go back to that main line. Okay, so let's go to dogs and chimpanzees. What do dogs and chimpanzees have? <coughs> hair. Hair and mammary glands. So let's put it right here. Let's put hair and mammary glands. How come we don't have apes as pets like we do dogs? Apes are They don't like to be pets. Yeah. It's probably like you wouldn't like to be a pet. They're they're smarter. <laughs> like pet chimpanzees have killed their owners. Yeah. They they and they get big and they're hard to handle. That's why you get big. Some some people have some people have them, but uh, you have to have a license. You have to know what you're doing. Yeah, didn't this one guy get killed by his chimpanzee? Yeah, uh, probably so. I heard that. They're stronger what? than people, so. Oh, yeah. One really got mad at you. Well, like, this guy was giving him. He had a monkey, didn't he? This guy was giving him. Bobo? So was what? This guy was giving him. Like, 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 depression medicine or something like that. Baby chimp, maybe? So, a forever baby chim. Look at my, look at my table here. Does this work? Yes, according to that, yes. That works. So each each organism, say dog. Let's follow it backwards. Does a dog have hair? Yes. Check the chart. Does it have mammary glands? Yes. Does it have amniotic eggs? Yes. Four lips? Yes. Vertebrae? Yes. Notochord? Yes. So that works for dog and chimpanzee. What about a finch? Does it have a gizzard? Yes. Epidermal scales? Yes. Does it does it have hair and mammary glands? Uh -oh. Yes. No, but we we didn't go through that one, see? If you come backwards from there, you you skip the hair and mammary glands. Amniotic egg it has, four limbs it has, vertebrae it has, notochord it has. So this works. And what you're probably going to have to do on the AP exam and maybe on my test coming up is construct one of these yourself. You see? Mm. I can do that. So they could give you a table like this, and you would have to construct you should do a little the evolutionary tree. Would that be like an essay question? Right could be, yeah, could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it was an essay question, could you just write that? And so would, you, would you give us something just well, like Well, they would probably say in the essay question, A, construct a phylogenetic tree from the data above. B, talk about blah, 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 blah. They would give you all the data. Yeah, they'd probably give you all the data. I'm not saying this is what they're going to give. I don't know what they're going to give. I'm just saying that this could be, this is something that, that you need to be able to, they could do it a different way. They could give you the evolutionary tree, and then they could ask you multiple choice questions about it. They could say, which of the above uh, have um, an amniotic egg but no hair and mammary glands? And you'd have to be able to read this thing. That would probably be a little bit easier for you. Um, they, who knows how they're going to ask it? Again, they have professionals that make these tests. But you, you do, you need to be able to read these trees. And, and, and on those computer programs that you've been doing, they've shown you these, right? So you, you have seen some of these before. And so um, you got to get good at looking at these. We're going to do it like this, not like the other way, right? What's like, the other like way? When you said, like, you showed us a picture. It could be either way. I like the other way better. You could do it either way. But can we do it this way? You can do it either way. Okay. Yeah, either way, any way works. You can do it You can do it from top down if you want, but it's usually done like, I, I usually see it like this, and sometimes you see it like that left to right. Unless you're Arabic. Yeah, maybe. If you're Arabic, it goes backwards. 
So let's look at this. A phylogenetic tree is a visual representation of the relatedness of species by descent from a common ancestor. The branch tips represent existing species. The branches connect the common ancestor, and the nodes depict where one species diverged into two or more species. Because the fossil record is incomplete and we do not have direct knowledge of evolutionary history, a phylogenetic tree must be inferred indirectly from data. For example, homologous structures, those that are derived from the same body part than a common ancestor, can be examined. The forelimbs of many animals have similar bone patterns. The feathers of modern birds are homologous with feathers found in fossils. In contrast, wings of birds and dragonflies are analogous. They are derived from different ancestral structures. So, he's gone through a kind of, this is not just what we talked about, it's a lot of stuff. Homologous structures, if you remember, are similar. Like, the bone structure of all these organisms, porpoises and horses and humans, are all similar. So, these are probably all share a common ancestor, a pretty close, pretty recent common ancestor, because they have all these similar structures. So we call those structures homologous. Y'all remember that? We actually already studied that. Yeah. Now sometimes though there are structures like the wings of a bird and the wings of a uh, dragonfly here. They're both wings, but they're not homologous because they actually come from different things. The wings of a bird are from their appendages and the wings of a, of a dragonfly are in large scales that have grown muscles attached to these in large scales. That's crazy. So it's their totally different origin. So they have similar traits, but not. So they're similar traits, but they don't mean that the two share a recent common ancestor. So it's kind of, they're kind of confusing, in other words. Why well, can't it, the book say that? I feel like it makes it way more confusing. It has something to that effect. It says it more scientific terminology. So analogous does not mean recent common ancestor, and homologous does mean recent common ancestor. Recent common ancestor? Recent common ancestor. They are derived from different ancestral structures. The cornerstone of tree building is to identify shared derived traits accurately. Species that share derived characters belong to a clade. A derived character shared by clade members is called a synapomorphy of that clade. You don't have to know that. One of the most basic ways to distinguish between ancestral and derived traits is by outgroup analysis. Okay, so he used the term clade. Any branch that you're interested in is a clade. Like you could say, this is the amniotic egg clade. Everything above here is the amniotic egg clade. That means all these organisms have am amniotic eggs. Here's the hair and mammary gland clade. See? Where is the vertebrae clade? We got Start the vertebrae. Starts here. Everything from here up is the vertebrae clade. So you would say we used the term outgroup before. This is the outgroup of the vertebrae clade. What's the outgroup of the amniotic clade? Below. It's every it's all of this. This these this is the outgroup of this clade. So the word outgroup means what you're what's not in the group you're referring to. Okay? So in their example, the lancelet was the outgroup. I think this gets kind of bad. Okay. Ah, oh, I wanted to do this. I'll do it next time. Make sure you read 19.